thank you everyone for coming. I'm Laurie Root. I'm the Vice President of Investor Relations uh, with United Way. And um, we really appreciate your um, volunteering to be a reading buddies uh, with the Imagination Library. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about the Imagination Library, uh, especially in Erie, um, it's been around since 1996. It's um, across uh, the footprint of the U.S. and also in um, three other countries. But we launched um, the Imagination Library in May of this year. And the foundation is very simple. Um, Dolly Parton wanted to provide a free book to children living in her community that she grew up in. And so she developed this program that sends a free high quality book to a child between the ages of birth and their fifth birthday every month. Well obviously it took off like wildfire and so the Dollywood Foundation um, really scaled it up uh, and since 1996 um, we're now at about 700,000 children uh, uh, that are participating in the Imagination Library here in Erie County, um, United Way is the agent, is the partner with the Dollywood Foundation. And what that means is that we are the fiscal agent for the Imagination Library. We're responsible for um, raising the funding because it does provide a free quality book to the children. So there's no cost to the families. And it's only about $30 a year for um, the children to participate. But when you start multiplying that, you'll, you'll see that the numbers um, can get significant. We launched the Imagination Library in May of this year. And we were estimating to get about 2,000 to 2,500 kids enrolled in the first year. We're a little over four months out and we have um, 5,300 kids signed up. So uh, it's going great. Um, there are 17,000 children living in the community between the ages of zero and five years. And so we're hopeful that we will uh, reach uh, ultimately about 12,000 of those. So um, we... Um, are very pleased with it, but we, and we know based on research that have been done by other communities that the impact of, of just having the books in the community is tremendous. I mean, to get these kids to have books, some of them, some of the homes have no books. Some of them have, if they have books, they aren't, certainly aren't nice quality children's book. So, um, so we're very excited about that, but when we were thinking about bringing it to the Erie community, we felt that we needed to do more, and doing more turned into the Reading Buddies program. And what it is, is a um, program that is a train the trainer model. So you all are, will be Reading Buddies. So you all will be fanned out after you go through the training at special events throughout the community, at community centers, faith-based organization, um, libraries, wherever we can hold special events bring families in, bring the uh, parents and the caregivers, um, the grandparents, any other family member that wants to participate as an adult to read to the children. And you all will, similar to what you're going to be going through today, will be um, working with the parents and the adults on how to read and how to take advantage of having these great books in the home to get children excited about reading and also to just use language and to engage and interact with the children. So um, Laura will be going through uh, the materials in your book, but I just wanted to point out the Reading Buddies Volunteer Program. Uh, it's a sheet that just explains what the uh, program is, uh, the why of it, uh, what it is, and one of the things that is important is that we do require a background check, and the information is a criminal background check run by the uh, Pennsylvania um, State Police. Uh, it costs ten dollars. It's very easy to do. It, you can do it immediately online, and you'll get a response right away. But we are asking um, all of the uh, reading buddies to complete that, and then on the other side, you will see that when we partner to do a Reading Buddy event, the host organization has certain responsibilities. United Way and the Reading Buddies um, volunteers have certain responsibilities. And we actually have an agenda that we want you to follow. Um, we will have additional resources for you. Uh, Laura will be going over some of that, but I wanted to point out to the frequently asked questions section that is on United Way website, and that's um, unitedwayerie.org slash imagination, and that will get you to everything that is, um, all the information about the Imagination Library. One of the things that we have found out is that the books are um, sent out staggered, and that means that the books that are sent to children between birth and one may be sent out on the third of a month 
and the last set of books may not be sent out until a week and a half later. So families are getting confused, especially if they have two kids in their family. One kid gets their book, the other one doesn't get their book and they're calling us. So that's really important to know and there's some other um, answers to questions that we are receiving that I think that you will be uh, find helpful. So um, I think at this point um, I am going to turn it over to Laura Schaff who is uh, our consultant who has developed uh, the Reading Buddies um, training. Thanks so much uh, for being here today. I appreciate you taking part in the training. My role is going to be to take you through the training um, just as you will be presenting it to the community. And when we're finished with the training, I'll talk to you a little bit about your role as a reading buddy because we have some materials that we need to go over. You all have a jump drive in front of you that I wanna talk about. So we'll kind of talk about that portion of the training uh, after we kind of go through our PowerPoint. If you would just take a look uh, in your folders um, you'll find a copy of the PowerPoint in there. So you can pull that out. I'm very excited to be a part of this training. I have uh, about 22 years of experience in education and see this as a really powerful way to work with children and families. Uh, so I was very excited and wanted to get on board as soon as I heard about it. Um, as Lori already talked about, um, you know, one of the things that we want to do through this training is stay true to the mission of the Dolly Parton Imagination Library, and that is really helping kids to understand the magic of books. We don't want to scare kids away. We don't want to scare parents or caregivers away. What we really want to do is just help caregivers capitalize on this unique opportunity, and that is to expose children to the love and to the magic of books. So I ask you to keep that in mind as you go through the training, um, because that really is, we're trying to to stay true to that mission and try to communicate that out into the community. It's, it's critically important. Let's talk first about the characteristics of a good read aloud. I have put a collection of books in front of you from the Dolly Parton Imagination Library and I'd like to give you just a minute or two to go through them and I want you to just talk with the person next to you about what you're noticing about those books. So just take a couple of minutes to page through them. Uh, you don't have to read the whole story, you can read portions of them, but make sure you get a good idea of all of the books in front of you. I hope you notice that you will see a collection of board books in some of those for the very young children that our caregivers are working with, um, but then you'll also see some more complicated text. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out um, is the little engine that could, just so that you're all aware, no matter what age a child signs up for the program, um, this will be the very first book that they receive. And if you open it up, you'll see a letter, uh, hello dear friends, signed by Dolly. Um, so children are, should be very excited to see that and a welcome letter from her. And then the last book that they receive is Look Out Kindergarten, Here I Come. And again, there is a letter from Dolly here, Dear Imagination Library Graduate. So after a child's kind of been through this, uh, this will be the last book that they receive. Anything else that you noticed? I did want to point out one more thing. Um, in many of the books, in the back, the back flap, you will see tips for caregivers. So some might have before, during, and after reading strategies. Uh, and so during the training, we want to make sure that caregivers are aware of that um, so that they can utilize those. Um, the one thing that Lee talked about that I think is important to point out is that, you know, we're dealing with caregivers um, who have different literacy abilities. Some of our caregivers, you know, may not be English language speaking. And so one of the things that we really want to take advantage of is how to use the illustrations with children to make, to tell that story, to make it more powerful. And I think you'll see some of that as we're going through. There is a book list uh, 
from birth to age one, age one to age two, age two to age three, uh, you know, and so on. So there is a book list. It's constantly revised. Okay, Maybe yeah, you can talk a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> yeah, every year they have a panel that uh, meets at the University of Tennessee or, or in Tennessee somewhere, and um, they literally lock themselves into the room for two days. They have recommendations that the books that even get uh, vetted to make it to the final consideration have already gone through a process. And uh, Penguin Books is represented, but they have um, early childhood literacy experts and um, early childhood education experts. And for a book to make it to the next year's list, they read, even the books that are on the current list, they read aloud. So they read aloud all of the books that um, are on the list and any book that is going to be considered and they go through a list. They want to have a you know, variety of genres, things that you have all have talked about, diversity of um, pictures versus illustrations, um, the quality of the book, um, and that sort of thing. So every year it changes and books will drop off and books will be added. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So I think that you see that we have a nice collection of books that are coming into homes uh, every month. Um, and I think that it's really important that um, we sort of capitalize on the fact that this is quality literature. And, and it's not something that you can, you know, you're, we're not asking parents to buy a phonics program or to do worksheets or workbooks. Um, that there is a lot that can be learned just from working with quality children's literature. So let's talk about that for a minute. Um, there's a lot of different data out there and statistics about what it looks like to be ready for kindergarten. But one of the things that we know for sure is that on average, children need to have a speaking vocabulary of about 20,000 words. Now, when you think about that, children are not getting that vocabulary from doing flashcards or workbooks or phonics programs. They're getting it by communicating with the people around them. And so what this provides for children is another vehicle to use for communication. The other thing that I think it's important to note is when the books are coming into the home. We want children signed up from this, for this program from the minute they are born. As a matter of fact, one of our local hospitals sends them home um, with a little sign up with a pamphlet to sign their children up. So it's really important that caregivers understand that from birth on is a critical time in terms of our brain development. And the books are coming into our homes during this critical time. So we really want to take advantage of all of that brain development by exposing children to good, to good literature. Um, one of the things that we also need to be aware of is that in terms of brain development, what's happening in terms of my emotional development is also critically important. We know that if children are feeling stressed, if they're afraid, if they're hungry, they're not ready to receive a whole lot of new learning because they've got other things in their mind. So it's really important that parents understand, caregivers understand, that what's going on emotionally matters just as much as what's going on in intellectually in terms of brain development. So we want to create a safe and loving environment and, and use this reading time to sort of build that togetherness as a community, as caregivers and children, as brothers and sisters, as grandma and grandson, whatever the case may be. That part is critically important. So there are two really big, big things happening here around this whole idea of read aloud. The, the fact that the brain is developing during a very critical time of growth, but also this role of emotion and how important it is that children feel that sense of security in their environment. So they really knew what they were doing in terms of setting this up from birth to age five, because this is a critical time in brain development. So let's talk for a minute about something that's happening in our own community. In your folders, you have the kindergarten readiness checklist that was developed uh, by Team One of Erie Together. This is, in my opinion, one of the best things that has happened in the Erie region in a long time because what it signals is that 
we're all speaking the same language, that everybody is on the same page, that we have a shared definition of what it means for children to be ready for kindergarten. Um, and we're hopeful that this checklist is in every diaper bag, on every refrigerator, on every nightstand uh, in Erie County. Uh, what I'd like you though to do is just take note of three main categories that I want to talk to you about just in terms of what happens during the read aloud time. So if you take a look at just listening and speaking, a lot of, of what it means to be ready for kindergarten can be accomplished through this read aloud process. So you might want to say to your child, turn the television off, get your book and come sit on the couch a multi-step direction. Um, you might want to say, brush your teeth, get your pajamas on, and get your favorite book, and I'll meet you in bed. So you're, you're setting children up to be successful with that multiple step direction. Listening and responding to conversation. We're going to show you a video in a minute uh, where hopefully you'll see lots of good conversation going on. And I think it's so important to think about the quality of that conversation with young people. So often it turns into talking to them instead of talking with them. Don't do that. Get off of there. Come over here. Get your shoes on. Eat your dinner. Put your books away. See, we're talking to them and not really talking with them. And so it's really important as caregivers that we understand that the role of talking with them can change the dynamic. So instead of saying, how was your day and just getting fine, OK. <laughs> and hasn't that happened? Oh, yeah. yes. It's, it's a matter of saying, oh, modeling what you want from them. I had a horrible day today. First I got in the car and I was out of gas, then I spilled coffee on the front of me. When I got to work, my shoes hurt, and then my boss got all over me because I wasn't done with a project. Tell me about your day. Do you see the difference there? What I've done is modeled for my child what conversation sounds like. And so we have a real opportunity to use books to aid in that. Uh, we'll again see some examples of speaking using multiple word sentences. And multiple word sentences can only happen if you're asking complicated, complex questions. And so we can use books to help you to do that. The other thing that I want to talk about is book handling and directionality. One of the things that you'll hear through the course of this training is a term, the language of learning. What we want to start setting up in homes is children hearing the vocabulary at home that they're going to be using at school in order to be successful. So we're not going to shy away from that. Instead of, instead of saying the name of this book is, we're going to say the author is. Instead of saying the person who did the drawings is, we're going to say the illustrator is. The other thing that we have to help children understand is this notion of directionality. Understanding what the front of the book is versus the back of the book. That we, go, we move from top to bottom, from left to right. That when we get to a line of, the end of a line of print, where do we go? Well, that's called a return sweep. We return and we sweep back across. So we want caregivers to use that language in their homes so that their children are better able to be successful in school. So teaching children about how to handle books appropriately. Understanding that the pictures support what's happening in the story, but the story is really the words, it's the print. And then as I talked about, understanding that print moves from left to right and top to bottom. Uh, the third big area that we can help children be more ready for school is story sense, comprehension. That just means meaning. Do they understand the story? And so using the pictures to help make predictions about what might come next. Asking children to retell the story. What happened first? What happened next? What happened last? And there's that multiple step as well. Understanding the concept of author and illustrator. Making personal connections to the story. There's a lot of research out there about how children, how we all build meaning. And one of them is by making connections. So if you can link it to your own life. Do you remember that was like the trip that we took? Or do you remember when mommy did this? Or do you remember when you did this? helps children to make those connections. Understanding the difference between fantasy and reality. Could, could this really have happened in real life or do you think it's just make-believe? Um, identifying the beginning and the end of the story. 
understanding different genres. So talking to children about what's fiction and what's nonfiction. Um, obviously comprehending stories, using vocabulary like characters, events, problems, solutions, um, and certainly getting children involved in the story by repetitive language and asking them to join in. So when you think about all the things that are covered on that uh, readiness checklist, these are three pretty big areas that by doing some simple read aloud we can address. So we really want caregivers to understand that this is time that's really well spent in your homes. So let's talk a little bit about what this looks like. Again, we don't want to scare people away from the read aloud. We want them to love it. We want them to see this as a really valuable time in their homes. Um, and so what we want them first to do when that book get, comes in the mail is just spend some time sitting with it, looking at the pictures, talking about the title, making predictions about what might be happening, having some fun about you know, making predictions about where this story is going to end up and really using that time to build some excitement and some interest in the story. The other thing that I might recommend to parents is just reading the story first themselves so that they're comfortable and ready to read it aloud with their children. But then reading it through once just for enjoyment. Again, we want to stay true to the Dolly Parton Imagination Library and we don't want anyone to think that they have to stop and ask questions on every page or turn it into a little quiz or a test at the end of the book. That's not what this is about. It's reading it for the love and enjoyment of reading. So we really want children and caregivers to have that opportunity. But just like with any good video game, any good movie, any good book that you've read, we want people to engage with these stories more than once. We want children to say, read it again, read it again. And it's during those subsequent readings that you can delve deeper into the story and talk more about what's happening and make those personal connections. So what I'd like you to do now, we're gonna show a snippet of some video. And these are community members, friends of mine, um, people from neighborhood centers, um, and what we ask them to do is just sit and read with their children. Um, and so what I want you to do the first time we watch this is pay careful attention to what you see the adults or the caregivers doing in the video. What kind of language do you hear? Uh, what kind of action do you see as you watch the video? is called Winnie the Pooh's Opposites. You see Winnie the Pooh? Look at him. Oh, look! Up. Oh, down. In. Out. Yeah, there he is. Do you see? Yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah. Do you want to turn the page? Turn the page. Boy, <gasps> happy, 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 and sad, dirty, see, he's very dirty, and clean, clean, scrub, scrub, scrub. Little baby cat into the barn. The cat bawled and bawled for her mother, but when the sleep the sleepy sound of a soft put, put, putter chuck came from ne the next stall. The scared little cat stopped bawling and drifted off to sleep. See the little cat? Mm -hmm. She missed her mom. This story is called Llama Llama Red Pajama <laughs> by Anna Dudney. That's the person who wrote it. What do you see on here? You see eyes? Yeah. What is this animal? A llama. A llama. Llama. Yeah. Well, let's look through and see what might happen. You can just tell me what you see on the pages. She's sleeping with her mama. Yeah, it looks like she's sleeping because her eyes are closed. 
That's a good flat. What else do you see? I see the the llama waving to mommy. Waving to her mama. What is Mama Llama doing? Can you point? Washing dishes. Washing dishes and Hug on the floor. You're right. <laughs> Baby Llama starts boohooing. Can you boo hoo? Boo hoo. <laughs> oh. Llama Llama Red Pajama hollers loudly for his mama. Can you say mama? Mama! <laughs> Baby Llama goes to sleep. You're right. That's You're a good. good story, huh? I read the book. So what do you think the lesson is? When when mama's downstairs, sometimes we have to be patient. You're right, patient. For sure. Uh, yeah, I have pain. Look, where the where am I? Where the bear? The little girl and her mommy. See the bear? Wait, we're gonna turn this way. Where the rabbit at? Where the rabbit? Is that the rabbit? Show grandma the rabbit. That's the rabbit. Rabbit. Rabbit, yeah. The giraffe. What? You want the bear. We see the baby. Turn the picture. Let's take a look at the book and see if we can tell what some of the things are that are going to happen in the story. Let's look at the pictures and see if we can figure it out. Oh, what does it look like? The dog sleeping. The dog sleeping. Who else is sleeping? The ladybug. So. And, oh. There's a ladybug boy. Do you think that's him? Yeah. Maybe, it does look like. He's right there in the middle. So now I'm thinking, oh, they were going on a walk to the playground. That's what they were doing, right? Can you find the words ladybug girl, Jack? Do you see where it says ladybug girl? Yes, there's a girl, look. Ladybug girl. What do you notice about her name? Ladybug girl. Yeah, do you see it, Sophie? Where does it say ladybug girl? Look, ladybug girl. What does this say? Ladybug girl. Yeah. Ladybug girl. Right. Hey, yeah, her name is in fancy writing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I notice it's in red, too. That helps it stand out. We don't fight each other. Yeah, we work together to fight bad guys. Like that giant snake over there! What's a giant snake? I wonder. What are you thinking he's pretending is a I giant snake? I think this is oh. a snake. What is it really? Can you tell? Yeah, Can you tell what that's supposed to be? Yeah. It's a, it's a slide, isn't it? But he's pretending it's a giant snake. Be like the cub who scales great trees to peer above the canopy. Come on, climb, baby, climb. Remember how we were climbing the steps? Come on, let's turn it up again. Look at the little cubs in the tree. Do you like that? Splash. Splash. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You see them? You're going back to that. That's good. Uh-huh. Oh, she can't find the car now, huh? She can't find the car? Is that the car? Is that the car? Let's see if that's the car. Snap the buckle, grab the box, put on brand new shoes and socks. Oh, he got his shoes. <laughs> yeah. Shoes. Big feet. Yeah. Say goodbye to Shaparama. Lama Lama loves his mama. But they went and got ice cream. Let's talk next about some things that you might expect to see as children develop um, around the idea of books. So what I'd like to do next is just talk about what you might see during that first year. And I think that we saw some video in the video, some examples of this. Definitely, as you saw, 
um, the youngest of the children in the video, you saw their eyes start to engage on the pictures. Um, that first they might be distracted about what's going on in the room, but you will definitely start to see children focus in on the pictures. And I think, Mike, you talked about the quality of those pictures, the color and the vibrancy of them. So that's very important. We'll definitely see children start to listen to your voice. They'll make eye contact with you. They'll start to pay attention to the sound of your voice. Loving the sounds of language. We saw it with the baby in the very beginning where dad kind of um, scrub, 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 and he started to giggle. Or the little girl who yells out, Mama! <laughs> So certainly starting to love the sounds of language. Liz, you already talked about how parents were modeling, pointing to the pictures and turning the pages. Um, I think the, the idea that we have board books in this collection is critical for children from birth to, to actually age three or four, but definitely from birth to age one. Um, the other thing that I think is so critical that we can start early on is helping children to start develop that vocabulary just by labeling things. So you saw grandma, show me the bear, where's the rabbit? Helping children to start to put labels to things while they're reading the story. Um, responding to statements, where's your nose, show me your nose. Or you heard uh, the grandpa say, no, just like you were climbing, climb, climb, climb. So starting again to develop that vocabulary. Mimicking parents making sounds, you'll start um, very early on seeing children start to mimic some of that. And again, showing excitement with the parent. If you're excited, they're going to be excited. If you're engaged, they're going to be engaged. So that's critically important. During the second year, obviously we build on, on year one, but we can start to turn over a little bit more responsibility. Children at this age can be taught how to turn the pages. And it is a little tricky. You know, very often children just want to grab at it. You have to teach them how to put their finger underneath the corner of the page and turn it. So they can start to take that process on. Answering simple questions like we saw in the video. Show me the dog. Show me the giraffe. Show me the bear. Um, certainly engaging in the story, following along with the pictures, um, getting involved in the story, using repeated language, filling in known parts of the story. Again, we want children to be hearing these stories over and over again so that they can become more involved. And finally, showing excitement for the stories. And I think we saw that with all of the kids. During the third year, again, understanding the difference between the front of the book and the back of the book. Um, getting ready for the book by talking about it and making some predictions using the cover and the illustrations on that front cover. Understanding now the idea of what an author is, an illustrator, a title. Engaging in more complex conversation around the stories and while they're listening to them. Um, I think that you saw some really good natural conversation with um, Chad um, and the little boy reading The Ladybug girl. Do you remember that? Some really good conversation. And the little sister who wanted to get engaged as well. Relating the story to their own lives. Again, that's going to help children build their meaning or their comprehension of the story. Retelling the story by looking at the pictures. This is a critical skill that children need to have in kindergarten. So there's a great deal of value in, in having children just walk through the story using the pictures and retelling what they think is happening. But also noticing some known letters and words. But we don't want to overemphasize that. Again, we want this to be an opportunity to really enjoy uh, the story. During that fourth year, again, we're building on what has happened in subsequent years. But we're seeing, again, the children take over more of the process. They can start to do that story walk or that picture walk. They begin to understand the difference between what is text and what is a picture. Um, hopefully, they're starting to notice that mom or dad are reading the left page before the right page and that their finger moves left to right across the page. They'll also be able to start to identify with the character, the setting, the problem and solution, and understand um, based on good conversation, what those words mean, but also finding known letters, words, and again, engaging with the story by reading the parts or saying the parts that they know. And then during the fifth year, uh, at this point, if children have been brought along from birth to age five by this 
rigorous set aside time of reading with kids, then they really should be able to take over the process of talking more and more about what's happening in the story just by using the pictures, really being able to identify left and right, return sweep, even maybe reading some of the text themselves, whether it's just by memory uh, or really knowing the words in the story, uh, and obviously doing more talking about the story and making more predictions. So when children are engaged in this process every day for five years, think about how powerful that is and how ready they will be for kindergarten, but not only just being ready for kindergarten, really loving language, loving that time together with their caregiver. And I think I'm hopeful that this builds lifelong readers by starting them out in this manner. So now what I'd like you to do is watch the video a second time, but instead, this time I want you to pay attention to the children. What do you hear them saying? What are you seeing them doing? And really pay attention to um, some of the things that we talked about in that checklist and if you're seeing some of those. This book is called Winnie the Pooh's Opposites. You see Winnie the Pooh? Look at him. Oh, look! Up. Oh, down. In. Out. Yeah, there he is. Do you see? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to turn the page? Turn the page. Boy. Happy, 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 and sad, and dirty, see, he's very dirty, and clean, clean, scrub, scrub, scrub. ...baby cat into the barn. The cat bawled and bawled for her mother, but when the sleep... The sleepy sound of a soft putt puff putter chuff came from ne the next stall. The scared little cat stopped bawling and drifted off to sleep. See the little cat? Mm -hmm. She missed her mom. This story is called Llama Llama Red Pajama <laughs> by Anna Dudney. That's the person who wrote it. What do you see on here? You see eyes? Yeah. What is this animal? A llama. A llama. Llama. Yeah. Well, let's look through and see what might happen. You can just tell me what you see on the pages. She's sleeping with her mama. Yeah, it looks like she's sleeping because her eyes are closed. That's yeah. a good thought. What else do you see? I see the, the the llama waving to mommy, waving to her mama. What is mama llama doing? Can you point? Washing dishes. Washing dishes and? Hugging on the floor. You're right. <laughs> Baby llama starts boo-hooing. Can you boo-hoo? Boo-hoo. <laughs> oh. Llama Llama Red Pajama hollers loudly for his mama. Can you say, Mama? Mama! <laughs> the llama goes to sleep. You're right. That's a good story, huh? I read the so what do you think the lesson is? When, when Mama's downstairs, sometimes we have to be... Patient. You're right, patient. For sure. Uh, yeah, I have pain. Look, where the where am I? Where the bear? The little girl and her mommy. See the bear? Wait, we're gonna turn this way. Where the rabbit at? Where the rabbit? Is that the rabbit? Show grandma the rabbit. That's the rabbit. Rabbit, yeah. The giraffe. Yeah. You want the bear. We see the baby. Turn the picture. Let's take a look at the book and see if we can tell what some of the things are that are going to happen in the story. Let's look at the pictures and see if we can figure it out. Oh, what does it look like? 
The dog's sleeping. The dog's sleeping. Who else is sleeping? The lady. So. And, oh. There's the ladybug boy. Do you think that's him? Yeah. Maybe. It does look like he's right there in the middle. So now I'm thinking, oh, they were going on a walk to the playground. That's what they were doing, right? Can you find the words ladybug girl, Jack? Do you see where it says ladybug girl? Yes, there's a girl, look. Ladybug girl. What do you notice about her name? Ladybug girl. Yeah, do you see it, Sophie? Where does it say ladybug girl? Look, ladybug girl. What does this say? Ladybug girl. Yeah. Ladybug girl. Right. Ladybug Yeah, her name is in fancy writing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I notice it's in red, too. That helps it stand out. We don't fight each other. Yeah, we work together to fight bad guys. Like that giant snake over there! What's a giant snake? I wonder. What are you thinking he's pretending is a I giant snake? I think this is a snake. What is it really? Can you tell? Yeah, Can you tell what that's supposed to be? Yeah. It's a, it's a slide, isn't it? But he's pretending it's a giant snake. Be like the cub who scales great trees to peer above the canopy. Climb, baby, climb. Remember how we were climbing the steps? Come on, let's turn the book again. Look at the little cubs in the tree. Do you like that? Splash. Splash. Yep. Yep. You see them? You're going back to that. That's good. Uh-huh. Oh, she can't find the car now, huh? She can't find the car? Right there. Is that the car? Is that the car? Let's see if that's the car. Snap the buckle, grab the box, put on brand new shoes and socks. Oh, he got his shoes. Grab the shoes. Yeah. Shoes. Big feet. Yeah. Say goodbye to Shopperama. Llama Llama loves his mama. But they went and got ice cream. I think what the video demonstrates is that regardless of the age, if you set that time aside, you can engage children in a good story. And, and it doesn't mean, you know, we watched grandma just labeling things. We watched um, one of the caregivers sort of abandon kind of reading the story and just letting the little boy turn the pages himself. So when we talk about this story time and read aloud, there are all kinds of different ways that it can happen and all kinds of ways that it can look. But the idea is that we've set this quality time together aside to share with each other. And I think that's really the key. So, so I think that hopefully we've demonstrated that there's a lot that can happen during this time. Um, and again, Really, we, we want to share just some of our favorites. You have these um, quotes in your handout, but just some of our favorites um, regarding reading and books. And once you learn to read, you will be forever free. And I think for those of us who love to read, we know that to be true in our own lives. And we want this for the children in our community. So um, I'm very excited to be a part of this. I think it's a great opportunity for our community. Um, and, and we hope that we can instill this love of learning and reading um, in all of the children in Erie. Um, a couple of final things that I want to share with you. If you turn um, back to your folders for a minute, you'll find something in there called Read Aloud Matters. And this is in its newest form. I'm excited about it. Um, this now has been designed to sort of mimic the kindergarten checklist. And again, this is something that we want in diaper bags and on nightstands and taped to refrigerators um, because we think this is just a valuable piece for caregivers to have and to use as they're uh, reading books with their children. So I do want to just take a couple of minutes to, to look at some of the quick tips, if we could. 
Um, we've included also what to expect from birth to age one, age one to age two, so you'll, you'll have that on one side and quick tips on the other. Um, a couple of things that I want to point out in the quick tips. You know, one of the things that we didn't talk about that I hope that you noticed is that in all of the read-alouds, there was a quiet environment. The TV was off, the cell phones weren't ringing, there was no radio playing. And so we really want caregivers to understand that this is a, a really good time to kind of put away all of the devices, turn the TV off and get into a good book. So I think it's important to kind of set that stage. It also helps children, as you said, kind of cuddle around the book, Liz, when, when they have that quiet time. So I think creating the environment for read aloud is really important. Um, also, just enjoying the experience together. Again, we don't want caregivers to feel overwhelmed that, you know, there's so much to do during this read aloud time. We want them to experience the read aloud time as a joyful time with their children. Um, teaching children to respect the books. You know, one of the things that you may need to deal with as trainers is, you know, we've got all these books coming into our house and we don't know what to do with them. Um, very often, you know, you're going to meet families who maybe can't afford to have a bookcase. And so we need to be able to kind of help problem solve that and to teach children to teach these books with respect. I think that um, what we're already hearing is that children are very excited to get these into their homes. So that respect is kind of built in because they have that sense of ownership. Um, but maybe we can suggest to caregivers that they set aside a shoebox or you know, something that they can use to kind of keep their books, their collection in one place so that when they give that multi-step direction, get your pajamas on, brush your teeth and find me your book, they're not digging through the, the uh, sofa cushions for it. So we do want to take some time to teach children to respect the books um, that they're getting in their homes. Um, also that it's a good idea for caregivers to maybe spend some time reading the story the first time through themselves. Um, we have noticed in this training that, you know, we'll have adults with a variety of literacy levels or skills themselves. And so one of the things that we're suggesting is that maybe before you read it with your child, you take a minute to read it yourself just so that you're prepared for it. Um, and I think that also kind of helps you to get ready to think about what questions you might want to ask, to think about what connections you can help children uh, to make. So it's a good opportunity to just become familiar with it. The other thing is this whole idea of using that language of learning. So talk about the title, talk about the author, talk about left page before right page. Use, you know, I don't know that, that children will actually need to use the term return sweep, but they need to know where to go when they get to an end of a line, don't they? So I think it's okay to demonstrate those things to children and to talk about it. But most importantly, to enjoy the story. Um, so I hope that that piece will become useful to caregivers in our community because I think it's got some good practical uh, advice. So now what I'd like to do is just kind of take a couple of minutes to talk about your role as trainers. Um, you all have on your tables a jump drive. That jump drive, and Lori, you can kind of help me out with this if I forget anything, has a number of things. You'll have a copy of the PowerPoint. You'll also have a copy of the PowerPoint with notes or talking points that you can refer to before you go out and do your own training. Uh, there will be a copy of the kindergarten checklist, a copy of the read aloud matters. And a registration form. Oh, and the registration form as well. So everything you need is on that jump drive so that you'll be prepared, you know, as you're getting ready and thinking about your presentation. It's key that you keep the presentation similar to what you saw today. We want to try to keep it at the same time. Um, and not go too far kind of off script so that everybody's getting the same experience. That doesn't mean that you can't, you know, share a little bit about yourself and your own stories and family, but we do want to keep the training basically the same. Um, as Lori already talked about, United Way of Erie County will be responsible for making the copies and working with the partner organizations to make sure, you know, that the PowerPoint is set up and there's child care if we need it, that kind of thing. So really what you need to do is just be comfortable 
working with a group of adults and knowing that you may have adults in your group maybe who don't want to speak out and maybe it's easier to turn to a partner and talk rather than sharing out in a whole group uh, you may have parents who have you know real questions about their child's development or how to handle multiple kids reading books at the same time. So you might have the opportunity to kind of share some of your own personal experiences. Um, one of the things that we've kind of talked about is, and I'm glad to hear that the books are coming into the homes at different times, um, but if the little engine that could is Jose's book, then Jose gets to sit next to me or sit on my lap. And when I read, Mia's book, then Mia gets to sit on my lap or sit next to me. But that we don't want children sort of sent off to their rooms because I'm only reading to Mia today. You know, we want it to be a family experience. And I think we can give caregivers some tips on kind of how to juggle more than one child at the same time. We also don't want caregivers to use a read aloud time as a reward or as a punishment. Everyone should have the opportunity for read aloud time. Um, it's, it should just become part of our day. And it doesn't mean that if I do it at bedtime, you have to do it at bedtime. Maybe for you, doing it around the breakfast table is the way to do it. You know, whatever works, but just make sure that you create that time. It's okay to do it when you're in the waiting room at the doctor's office. It's okay to do it in the car if someone else is driving. Whatever the case may be, but just take advantage of these beautiful books that are coming in to your home.